All right, guys, we got a 2009 Ford Flex. I'm going to show you guys how to replace the rear brake pads. Simple and easy, the tools you're going to need. And you're going to see how to compress this uh, caliper. You don't need any special tools. I will be using special tools, but I'm going to show you how to do it without it. So follow along, and uh, I got some tools here. I went and got a 13 millimeter gear wrench, 14. Got myself a long needle nose. If you have one of these, you don't need this $400 tool over here. Got me a pick. I got me another $80 tool, which is not gonna work on this car. I'm gonna show you why it's not gonna work. So let's put this back down. So this is the $400 tool right here, made by Blue Point. It's gonna come with a whole bunch of stuff in here. It's a complete kit, works on a lot of cars. This is what you're actually gonna need if you wanna do it uh, with the special tool, but this will get the job done, okay? So let's start this job. Okay, so first, we're gonna remove the 13 and the 13 millimeter here. And it's, you see how it turns right there? So we're gonna have to hold that. You can get a vice grip or If this doesn't work, then we'll get a white strip, but that worked pretty good. So this baby comes out right here. It's loose already. And we're gonna do the same thing in the bottom end. There you go. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. So if this free play, same thing, hold it with the vice grip or a needle nose, and you should be able to get this guy off. After that, you're gonna grab your caliper and just yank it out. Notice the brake pad has a small little notch on the inner brake pad. So when I take that off, I'm gonna show you. So this one has a small little notch that notch goes right where this notch is. So this sits in there just like that. So when you're done compressing your caliper, this thing has to be nice and straight just like that. Okay guys, uh, so let's take off this little pad in the back. So uh, if you have a flathead screwdriver, use that, but anything will work just to get this pad out. Look how low this brake pad is and the hardware came out. Anyways, what we're going to do next is we are going to compress this piston. So if you got a C clamp and try to clamp this guy, it's not going to go in. Okay. If you put your tool here, if you put one of these right here, it is not going to compress. Okay, guys, it is not going to compress. None of this is going to work on it. Okay. None of this is going to work on it. So this here is a no-no. This piston is not gonna compress, okay? Notice, it has a fluid line and it has emergency cable. So this is a dual caliper. So whenever you're pulling your handbrake or pushing your handbrake, your emergency brake, it's also applying the same way your foot brake will work, okay? So, uh, what you can do is, first, what I like to do here is, first is let me get a, get a small rag and, uh, we're gonna clean this boot up really good, okay? So let me get a rag. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do here is uh, got me on some WD-40. A lot of people gonna talk crap about it like they always do, but it is the magic. Okay, so let's clean this baby up a bit. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some WD-40, just spray it on your rag. Spray this baby on your rag. The reason why we're doing this is, okay, because when you twist this caliper, the rubber is going to go with it, okay? The rubber is going to try to twist with it. So what I like to do here is just a tiny bit, right? Just lift this uh, boot up just a tiny bit, okay? It's not going to harm anything, okay? And you get rainwater in here, you get snow and salt in here. Why not put some of this lube in there and it's going to work like a champ. Anyways, we got that baby in. So, if you can have a friend help you, you're gonna use this needle nose right here. You're gonna put this right on the two notches. 
and you're gonna twist it counterclockwise, okay? I'm sorry, clockwise, not counterclockwise. So, but you don't wanna do it like this, okay? Cause you're gonna yank the cables and lines. So have somebody help you. And this baby is gonna turn in just like that. My camera might not have a good angle, but watch this guys. This baby turned on me so easy. That's what I like. Okay, so all you do is turn and push down against it. Keep doing that, but I'm not gonna waste a lot of my time, but you guys can understand how to do this. Just twist and push. That's what this tool is gonna do right here. So we got a tool here. This is the function of this tool, to twist and push at the same time. So we're gonna use uh, one of these and we're gonna use this handlebar here. So how this goes is, it goes and sits on the notches just like that. And then your tool, well, you have to, I just was showing you guys how that sits, but the tool has to sit together at the same time. Let's come back out and let's put this tool in there. Let's come back a little bit more. So we're gonna come out all the way. So once this is in place, it's gonna turn and you see how it comes out. So it's pushing and turning at the same time. That's what it's doing there. Push and turn, okay? So let's go back and let's put, we have to line the notches. Once the notches are lined, okay, we should be able to turn this out. So once it sits right there, just like that, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take our 14 millimeter here, and we're gonna just turn this tool just like that, and the piston is gonna go in. If your rubber boot is turning with it, every time, just give it a little snug. So that's what we're gonna do with the plier, but that's gonna take me a long, long time since I'm over here working on a customer's car, but at home, you could do that, take your time, uh, spend a good 20, 30 minutes just doing this, and take a break in between. And once this thing is compressed all the way, it's gonna stop. You're not gonna be able to go any further, okay? It, there you go, it stopped. So I'm gonna turn back a bit. And that way we can release the tool. Okay, since we turned back a bit, we should be able to loosen this tool out of here. And that's it, bada bing, bada boom. You're gonna have air in this side here. If you have if you have liquid in it, that means your caliper's leaking internally. So usually it's air in there. So make sure you take care of that air pocket. And look at that, caliper is sitting nice and flush. But remember what I told you, these notches has to be straight. So we can just come back, probably half a turn. Cause we can't go any further. And half a turn and that's all it takes. There you go, right there. All right, so that's it guys. That's how you're gonna compress the caliper. But if you wanna continue watching, you can do so. And I'll show you how to put the brake pads in. Okay guys, so it's time for us to install new brake pads, but you need to remove this hardware. There you go, that's one, this is two. Uh, you're gonna have the same ones back here. Remember, one of them came off with our brake pad. Two of them actually came off. Okay, so they're all gone. So make sure you clean up really good in between here. What I like to use is a wire brush. Works really well. It gets in there just like that. Same thing on the back end. Make sure your caliper is just hanging back here. There you go. Once you're done doing that, take your parts cleaner, which is a brake cleaner right here. Spray, spray, spray. And that's it. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. What I'd like to do next is, you wanna take a little bit of greasing, every single little spot where metal is gonna meet metal. Put a little bit of greasing, try not to get it on the water. Okay, there you go. 
So this is just a regular brake grease for uh, brake grease, high temp grease. So we're gonna have four of these in the brake pads. So here's the brake pads I got right here, Evolutions. Pretty good brake pads. It's gonna have pads inside. And also it's gonna give you these are uh, of eight hardware shims. So what you want to do is each one is going to sit in a position like this. Okay, one, two, if you can notice the edge here, so nothing should be touching your rotor. If you spin it, nothing should be touching, okay? If it touches, it's going to scrape and make noise. Same thing on the inner. Okay, I think I got these the wrong way, so let me just switch them up. Okay, my mistake. So, you see this edge? This edge has to be on the inside. So if I put this on the top here, this would fit good on the top. Can be facing on the outer edge. So if I put this one here, this fits here really good. Okay, the flat surface here and the high point is in the back. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for the back end. Okay, same thing goes for the back end. Okay, I already had one sitting there. So let me put this guy, okay, this one won't fit there. Okay, this guy will fit there. So this one, nope, this one won't fit either. Okay, yeah, this one will fit. So once you have all four in there, we're gonna get our brake pads. Okay, let me just show you guys up front and close personal view right here. You see this? The edge, make sure this edge is, is to the back end, not to the outer edge here or here. Same thing on the shims in the back. Okay, next step, we're gonna take a little bit more greasing. And, but before that, I want you guys to put on the brake pads, okay? Put on your brake pad. The reason why you wanna put on your brake pad now is, okay, you see how this brake pad goes in what? One finger, okay? If you're trying to tap this in with a hammer or screwdriver, no good. That means you need to file a bit here and a file here so you can have enough clearance for the pad to go in. So since this brake pad fits, try them both in first. That way you can throw, throw a little bit of greasing here, and here, here, and here. After that, you take your brake pad, stick it in there. It's very simple to get this guy in there. So all brake pads are the same. So it doesn't matter which one you use where, unless you have some type of brake wear indicator sensor. So both of my brake pads are in there. So if your brake pads are not free like that, it's an issue. But also if you need to tap these hardwares down, just tap them in because your pads won't have enough clearance. Make sure you tap them a bit with a hammer, not a hammer, Flathead screwdriver, just tap them in. So there you go, we got the pads in. So we got the pads in, and if they don't fit, you need to push it down on the hardware a bit more, file it if you need to. Remember, we have a small little notch here. So it's the same notch in the back. That's the reason why we have this guy centered out and you, if your slider pins need greasing, grease them. Our slider pins look pretty good. I looked at it, so we don't need to. So if you need to, just pull them off, just like that. Clean them up, put some greasing on both of them, top and bottom, and make sure the, uh, the boot clips onto it. So the last thing we're gonna do here is, we're gonna take some greasing, put it right on the pad, on the outer edges of both brake pads. <laughs> You're gonna take your caliper, it should go in nice and smooth. And bada bing, bada boom. There you go. And all we need to do is, okay, I might have to make sure if this thing is, okay, I'm gonna turn this thing up a little bit more, a tiny bit more. So I'm gonna turn this a tiny bit more because I see a little bit off. There you go. And this should be a perfect 
Great job here. We're gonna capture our two bolts. So you're gonna have to push up against it and capture your bolt, 13 millimeter. Same thing in the bottom here. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. And then we need to tighten this guy. Remember, when we're trying to tighten this guy, this is gonna try to turn with it. Put your finger on a tiny bit as much as you can get it, okay? If it goes all the way and then it locks up and it holds for you, good, that's it. If you need to torque this baby, you can torque it, but we're fine, and same thing up here. And just turn it, just put your finger right here so this doesn't spin with it, even though it's not spinning now, but it might later, there you go, it's spinning now. Stopped, spinning now all the way. So put your finger on it. Once it grips it, it's not going nowhere. And if it does keep going, you are going to have to hold it and, and turn it nice and tight. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank you for watching, guys. A lot of people have me. I should be opening this valve, but these are usually jammed up. No need to do a brake flush. Just do your brake flush regularly. Make sure you bring the car down once you're done both sides. Make sure everything is tight. Pump your brake pedal four to five times before you start the car. You're going to feel the pedal soft and then we'll get hard and that's it. Then you can drive the car, start the car. Anyways, thank you for watching.